Okay. Alright, so we've gone around and moved most of these crosses around and gotten our boxes relatively similar in size. They're not exact, but I, I did just temper all this up with a lot of soap so that I can make these little micro adjustments. So that's what I'm doing around here is I'm just kind of going through and making really, really minor modifications to where these strings go. And that's, that's going to help me a lot with lining up, um, with lining everything up and getting it where it needs to be. <clears throat> So, I don't know if y'all can see the dog, but if you can, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> this is just his thing. Okay, so now that we've gotten everything lined up, everything looks good and square, now I'll take my string. And so this is still the same string that we used for the foundation. And now we're just going to use that and continue on. So you can see where I come out. I've got one to jump over right here. And then this is my dead end that's hanging out right here. So I'm gonna go in on the right side of my dead end, just like we did whenever we were increasing the foundation. And this is gonna look really, really similar to whenever we increase that foundation, but there's one major difference, and we'll show you here in just a minute. But it's at the, the top of your button, and the top is where I'm kinda of considering uh, I guess what would be like the apex. So this is what I'm calling the top. I've been referring to that this whole time. So if you haven't followed what I meant, that's what I mean. Let me just tighten this one up. I don't want to make that cross get off kilter. Okay. So now I'm just going to follow up this one on the left and do exactly as it does. So it goes over one, under one, and then over one, under one again. So sometimes I'll do this too, and it kind of helps speed things up where I won't pull through every time I go under a string. I'll just wait and go like feed my needle under two and then continue on. This got backwards on me, so I'm gonna have to spend a little time working this. So try not to let that happen. So I was trying to get quick and fancy and that's exactly what happens to you whenever you try to do something fast, or at least that's what happens to me. I don't know about everybody else. Okay, so now that that's straightened back out and more hair side out, continue on. So here's where the difference comes in. So we're going to go over one, and instead of going under one, we're going to go under this cross. So before we went over the cross, so here we're going to go over this one, and then under these two, just like that. And so that's your major difference, and you're just going to do that pretty much the entire time that you are interweaving this. So this is the one that we're working on right now is considered the under two over two interweave pattern. Uh, we're just going over one under one right now, but by the end of everything, it'll be over two under two. So what I just did right there is really important. So I just dug under there and pushed this back up. So what that does is it kind of keeps everything down and then we can fill in this larger part uh, as we need to. But you want all your your um under your crosses you want to push those as far towards the the apex or the top that you can get them so now don't pull that down too much because it's going to pull down where you just pushed it up so now as we're coming down once again following the string on the right so it goes over this one and under this one so we're just going to do the exact same thing that's going on right there and i y'all might have to give me just a minute here now make sure that stays pushed up and then continue on. So basically we're just making what some people call railroad tracks. We're going to go over one, under one again. And these will be your doubles. So we're creating doubles right now. And then once you've created doubles in certain places, the thing to do is split those doubles. So over one. And then just like we did at the top, we're going to go over this one and then we're going to go under the cross. So go under the cross just like that. And then we're going to come out this side. And so make sure these, just like on the bottom, or I'm sorry, on the top, we made sure that they were coming out um, kind of as high as they could. Same story here. 
So make sure that these sit as close to your body strain or your body as you can get them. So now that we're headed back towards the top, do the same thing again as the one on the left. So it goes over one, under one. And so you basically just keep rocking and rolling with this pattern this entire time. That's that's what the pineapple is, these interweaves. So over one, under one. And we're about to come to our first double. And once we get to our first double, I'll show you what you do. Okay, so now once again, we're at the top here. So we're going to go over this one, then we're going to go under this cross. But on the other side of this, we've got a double. And what do I mean by a double? I mean these two strings are both going over this string that's running right here. They both are basically doing the exact same maneuver. So we're going to split that double. So it's going to look like over one and under basically three. So you've got this one, this one, and then this one right here. So over one, under three. And then once again, so we just made that maneuver and we dove under right there. So I'm going to make sure that this gets pushed up and kind of gets over the edge of that, that little piece of brass that I have with my maker's mark. Just like that. And then remember, don't pull too tight because you'll pull it right back down off of what you just did. So now we're following the one on the right. So we just split that. So we're going to go over one, under one. We're going to do the same thing again. So over one, under one. Okay, now we're right back at the bottom. So we're going to go over one again, following this one on the right. And then once again, like we just said at the top, there's a, a double out in front of us. So we're going to go under three instead of just under the cross. And then that one's kind of getting low. So once again, come in there, push that up with your fid. Make sure it stays pretty close to the top. Okay, now we're following the one on the left of us. So we're going over this one, under this one. And this pattern, you're gonna, once we start running into crosses on the way up or the way down, and I explain that, you just basically do that pattern all the way for every single interweave. So over one, under one. And try not to move your X's around that you spend a lot of time uh, placing correctly. But if you do, don't worry about it. You can go back and move them around later. So there's another double out in front of us. So we're going to go over one, under three. And once again, I explained earlier that this is the under two, over two interweave. And so far, I've said nothing about over two, under two. But whenever it gets all the way to the end, that's what it becomes, is over, over two, under two. Okay, so now we're at a double, finally. So now, instead of just going over one, under one, we're going to do what the right does, but it's going over this one that we're coming out right over the top of, and then we have to split this double. So it'll put us coming out under, but you're also splitting that double. So this is the first time that we've split a double that's not at the top or bottom. So that's where your over two, under two is going to eventually come in. So now we just keep on trucking with this one that's on the right of us. So over one, under one. And then you're basically just going to do that for the entirety of this, this heel knot. So over one, now we're back at the bottom. So we're going over one, and once again, under three. and then make sure that stays pushed all the way up. Okay. Now we're gonna, we have another pair of doubles. So you can see they're both going under this one on the right of us. So we're gonna go over two, under one. Then we just catch up with that one that's on the left of us. So it goes over one and under one. And 
Now we're getting towards the top here, so it's going to go over one, and then under three again. And then see how that got stuck down in there? Just take your fid, pop it in there, push it up over the edge there. Now, I'm going to come back down, and we've got a few doubles. So now we're going to go over two to split this double, and then we've got another double out ahead of us. So then we're going to go, instead of just under one, we're going to go under two. And then you just will keep doing that as you create more doubles. You'll just keep splitting them whenever you run into them. So over one, under one. And then over one, and then this is under three again. Make sure that stays where it's supposed to be. Okay. And then we're going to go over two. And then once again, there's another double out in front of us, so I have to use my fid. over two, under two. Then over one, under one. So you can see basically we're just creating a bunch more boxes of over one, under one eventually, or over, over two, under two, but still creating a lot more little boxes. So over one and under three again to split that double. And make sure to push this up. As I can tell, it's already below that, that maker's mark collar. Just like that. Okay. Over two, and run into a double. And then under two. Don't hesitate to use a fit if you need it. I just feel like it's a little faster without having to pick this back up and do all this. So we have another double out in front of us. So we're going to go over two and then just under one and come out with that string that's on the right side that we're following. And we're going to go over one again and then under three to split that double again. over two, and then under two to split the double. I'm going to do another over two, and then under one to pick back up where that string on the left is, since there's not a double out in front of us anymore. And then we're going to go over one, and under three, to split that double again. And I'm kind of speeding up here, but I don't think it's that big of a deal because I think you've probably gotten the pattern at this point, or at least I would, I hope so. And then it's over two, under two, and then over two again, and finally we're at another under two over here at the bottom. So now we're getting close to being done. I think we're probably about three quarters of the way done and you can see I'm running out of string and this might be a perfect opportunity to, to tell you what happens whenever you do run out of a string. Uh, over one then under three again okay. over two under two got to use the fid. It's getting getting a little tight. Then over two, under two, 
I'm gonna probably have to switch out strings on this next pass. But over one, and then under two, just put that double. Now we're gonna have to push that back up. Okay, and over two, under two. And over two, under two, again. Okay, this is about to work out perfectly. So now we're gonna go, now that we're at the very bottom, we're gonna go over two, because there's a double here now. Hopefully you can see that. There's a double. And then instead of coming out under here and splitting that, we're just gonna go right out the edge. So we're just going to go over those two and kind of out right there. And I'm probably going to have to take the, the little needle off because it, it won't reach. But I have to just bury this underneath here, see if we can manage it. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to show you a trick. So if it won't reach, stick your needle where you want it to go. Push it as far as you need to in to where you still have access to the hook and loop mechanism. And you're going to hopefully be able to reseat this where it needs to be, which is kind of difficult. But Okay, just like that. And then just pull it all the way through. And that just helps you get the needle in place and at least be able to use that. Okay, so now now I'm going to have to set this down, so go ahead pause it. Yeah, you're good. Okay, so we just ended this string right here. So we jumped over to and where we should have sorry, where we should have came out is not here but right here between these two strings so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna fish my new string in there and act like I never ended this one so I'm just gonna pop in here pull it not all the way through but most of the way through just like so and then pick up as if nothing ever changed. So we're going to go over two, under two. And we're still following the one on the left of us. And it always takes longer once you get a new string. You got to work it all the way through. But And these strings I'm using are about six feet long, maybe a little more. But you want to stay around the six foot length. So over two and under two. And so all we're doing is, is still splitting doubles, creating more and splitting more. And that's the name of the game with the pineapple knot, is just making and splitting doubles. So now we're gonna go over two. So this is the first time at the top that we've come over two. So you can see we've got a double right here that go over or under this string. So we're going to go over one of those and then under the three again. So this time it's over two under three instead of over one under three. And remember, push that back up. And this one that kind of got dragged down, push that one back up too. It's worth it to go back through here and make sure everything stays in the right spot. Take the time. Just take a little bit of extra time and it'll make everything look really nice.
So I'm going to go over 2, under 2. I actually think this may be the last trip around the around the button for this over two under two so over two under two So now it's just going to go over to and then what you can do is now we're going to start an over three under three pattern but I'm just going to pull it out right here right now so that we can talk about everything else and then if I want to do something different I can go back fish it out and and do something different with it but for now we're just going to go over two and then straight out the bottom of the button down here. Just like that. So now this, what we've created is our over two, under two, pineapple, interweave, heel knot. So everything is still fairly straight and square around the bottom here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some time now and I'm just going to move everything around a little bit. So I'm going to continue looking at these crosses and I'm going to make sure they go in a straight line from the base all the way to the bottom or all the way to the top on every single row. And so I'm just going to do that and I'm going to push these around as much as I need to. And if I need to add a little bit of moisture to make sure that I can actually move these things around and that they'll stay where I move them then I'll just grab a, a damp um, terry cloth towel like a, a bathroom towel and I'll just rub some moisture onto these sack them up for a little bit and then get them to where I can move them to be exactly where I want them to be um, but to do the rest of this button, you've done an over two, under two. So that means you're moving on to an over three, under three. And so this is what I was talking about. So I want to be able to, to jump under these down here. Um, I think I'm not really filled in very well anywhere around here. And so what, I, what I'll do is kind of use that as an assessment to say, okay, how, where do I need to come out? around here and then kind of backtrack from there because you can do more interweaves like and fill up this part but down here is the most important part to fill because it's the smallest in diameter so fill from the bottom to the top so I focus on my bottom down here so I kind of want to end up going in maybe with this string right here with this one so that whenever I'm coming up on the left of it I can shoot across and that'll that feels like it'll probably fill in pretty well so then I follow it back down and I know I need to start at how many up so this is the last place it comes out right here actually you could go all the way to the top right here so I know I need to come out just under one so now where I'm at it's kind of hard to describe I think you I think it's one of those things that you kind of learn um, as you go but where I came out here so I'm gonna I'm gonna backtrack one so I'm gonna pop this off to to pull my string back through where we just put it the last time I think this is it right here. Yep. So I'm just going to back that out completely. Okay. And I got to rethread our needle.
Now, I'm not going to I'm not going to show the rest of this because it's basically the same exact thing that we just did. I mean the exact same maneuvers um, to fill it in. But I'm going to go over those two just like I did before, but now I need to come out just next to a single one. So I need to come out with only one crossing over it. So with, I'll pick that one since it's relatively close. So I'm going to go just like that. So now that I just did this, I'm now on track to follow that one down. The over two, under two pattern. I'll just keep on rolling just like that. So then I'm just going to follow this one around. And then whenever I get up here, I'm going to go under what it'll look like four. It'll be these two and these two. So now I'll come out right there and then go down. And you just keep doing that just like you did the over two, under twos. And that's how you do a heel knot and fill it all the way in. Stop it. Mm -hmm.